What does Spotify have to do with the Kraft Heinz company? Before you guess, I'll give you a hint. It has nothing to do with a new remix of the Nigerian dance hall recording artist Ketchup by DJ Mustard. <laughs> Odds are when you think about the music streaming and podcasting company Spotify, you don't easily connect it with the 150-ish year old CPG conglomerate, the Kraft Heinz Company, which owns iconic food and beverage CPG brands like their namesakes Kraft and Heinz, Oscar Mayer, Kool-Aid, Jell-O, Lunchables, Planters, Maxwell House Coffee, and that's just to name a few. In total, I think they own somewhere over 100 brands, global brands, and they operate in more than 50 fragmented CPG categories. In recent years, CPG products have become increasingly harder to kind of fit into this like clean categorical silo. And within a massive company like the Kraft Heinz company, that becomes a huge issue because you don't really understand how to allocate resources correctly, be that through brand management, marketing, product development, and all of this creates inefficiencies, it slows things down, and it has caused a lot of problems to the Kraft Heinz company. So what exactly does this have to do with Spotify? Now Spotify definitely has no idea the differences between a category like shelf stable salad dressings and their refrigerated counterparts. But Spotify has had to deal with a similar issue within their business. If you think about a similar question that Spotify has had to deal with, how do you categorize different music today? If you think about it, what's the difference between something like deep house and funky house music or Texas country to classic country? You hear about it time and time again when artists kind of come together from one genre or another, or maybe they make music that kind of crosses over. It's very hard to categorize that music. And Spotify brilliantly attacked this problem by taking the kind of original content-based groupings. So you think about growing up, you had, you know, music genres, be language or geographical location. That's kind of how they classified music categories. But Spotify took that and applied a different lens towards context-based groupings. Now, I'm not sure if most of you guys have or have used Spotify before, but if you open up their app or if you browse on just their desktop version, you'll quickly see that they have a bunch of like groupings, like playlists that come up with titles like work from home, focus flow, or workout beats. Now, what exactly would those be from a content perspective? Would those be the same genre or they're a mix of genres? There are some commonalities across all of these playlists or groupings. They solve a problem for the listener. And anyone knows that it's in the solution when you start to build value and loyalty in that customer brand relationship. Whether it's an activity, maybe like a romantic dinner or a time related event like Women's History Month, context-based group playlists are quickly becoming the new paradigm in which we experience music. And quite honestly, it started to extend to all other consumer platforms. So kind of bringing this back to the Kraft Heinz company, they just recently rolled out their strategic transformation plan. And I'm gonna be talking mostly around the pillar in which they're calling consumer platforms. During this recent investor event, they rolled out this kind of extensive reimagination transformation of how they were going to deal with the like the consumer categories within their business. Like I mentioned before, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of SKUs of products are within more than 55 different like product categories. But now the Kraft Heinz company will focus only on six consumer driven platforms based on a groupings of real consumer needs. And these include taste elevation, and this is focused around enhancing the taste, flavor, and texture of food. A common question, problem that they would be trying to solve would be, what should I put on my burger? 
Another platform would be Easy Meals Made Better. This is convenient foods that minimize trade-offs at mealtime. A common consumer problem that they'd be trying to solve would be, what is an easy meal to make for my family? The third one is around real food snacking. These are nutrition rich, tasty, convenient, clean food experiences. The problem that they'd be trying to solve from a consumer mindset would be, what can I snack on to get me through the 3 p.m. slump? Fourth consumer platform category would be fast, fresh meals. This helps consumers make fresh, easy, prepared, or assembled meals. They would be solving questions or problems like, what do I need to put together a quick lunch? The fifth consumer platform would be easy, indulgent desserts. These would be sweet and indulgent treats that bring simple joy to every day. Things like, what is a five minute dessert that will get a smile? That is a question that I'm sure a lot of parents have. And the final consumer platform would be flavorful hydration. And this is hydration across kids, beverage, and beverage mixes. And a common problem that they would be trying to solve would be what drink should I serve at my daughter's soccer game? So why is this contextual approach important? Business strategy should no longer be focused solely around the product. Instead, it should be focused around the consumer or the customer and their specific needs. It doesn't matter how good your offering is if you're not delivering value to your target market. As technology evolves, consumer patience and attention spans start to shorten. Consumers have increasingly become more emotional and more stressed and anxious than ever before and they want their problems to be solved by those in which they're giving a share of their wallet to. Just like Spotify, Kraft Heinz is seeking to provide solutions to everyday problems. So you have to ask yourself, what pain points are your products solving? The goal for any CPG brand is to find the value that the product provides and make it evident within the marketing materials. Focus on solving a consumer's pain point and make explicit what you are solving rather than purely showing the features of your product. If Kraft Heinz can become the go-to product portfolio for five minute desserts that get a smile, quick lunches, or the go-to burger accessory, consumers will start to form an internal association between that problem and the Kraft Heinz company. And this is the beginning of habit forming products. Final thoughts before I let you guys go. Simply put, I believe this is the step that all legacy CPG portfolios should be taking now if they've not already done so, as this will be the bridge from traditional to digital business. CPG brands need to continue moving more and more towards meeting the consumer on their own terms. Consumers are becoming more demanding than ever, so CPG brands need to develop a contextualized and personalized strategy to stay relevant in the market. Instead of the saying content is king, it should actually be context is king, or at least that's what seems to be upon us today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you some value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.